All right, you adorable little carbon footprints. I figured it was time to get back to the magical world of Seattle, where the IPA flows freely and no one wants to admit it tastes like shit. Seagal is as real of a sheriff in this show as he is in Lawman, so it's basically the same show, but with worse acting. All right, let's go fight some Yakuza, because this is Red Eye Reviews. We start with someone Googling every possible gang in the United States. The Mexican gang MS-13 and the Crips. There's talk of the Yakuza joining forces with the Tongs. Yeah, why not? Seattle has all those. Sure. It's a miracle Starbucks ever got off its feet with all that organized crime going on. Our informant, who somehow knows everything, hands us a torn piece of notebook paper. Seagal gives him a dirty old envelope, which seems like a pretty fair trade. You gotta watch out for the Tamabuchi brothers. So Barbie and Ken help stake out an old office building. We wait and we eat because, you know, stakeouts make people hungry. Seagal has been on thousands of these. Mike said that the meat was going to be today. His words used to be pretty good. <laughs> then our informant calls and he goes, oh, uh, sorry. By the way, they aren't there. Uh, <laughs> turns out we just did this to fill time because uh, this episode's not really that long. They are actually in this other place. All right, Randy, get with me, man. See if you can get Mason and Julia to meet me over here right now. We cut to an Amazon fulfillment center before the robots were spraying people with bear mace. This one guy shoves some money in his back pocket, just letting it hang out. Like, do you want to get robbed? Because I kind of want to rob you. The Yakuza show up. They start messing everyone up. All kinds of chaos. This one guy made a suit out of an emergency blanket. He's just looking like a piece of aluminum foil with hair. Our cops show up, and they seem to have a handle on the situation. Until Seagal comes in, fills this dude with bullets. Get him down! Get on the ground! Escalate, escalate, escalate. Seagal has been watching a lot of wrestling lately, and he is pumped to try out some of those moves. They do manage to catch all the guys. Oh, okay. All the guys except, you know, this guy. This guy was beaten to death by Count Chocula. Oh, wait. No, he's not dead. That's a false alarm. Okay, uh, now he's dead. Now he's dead. Uh, back at the precinct, Mr. Cellophane rips his shirt open. He shows Seagal his dope-ass dragon tattoos. And Steve is like, oh, shit. Are you Japanese? I had no idea. I speak Japanese. Sushi. Summer Arigato. You're wasting your time. Monday. Cut over to some random dude holding up a bank at gunpoint. Not even a little bit familiar? So anyone here got any idea who I am? My name is Leroy Jacobs. Dude, if you're trying to rob people, it's probably better that they don't know your name. My name is Leroy. While Seagal is talking to the human hot pocket sleeve, we get called by the most emotionally in tune SWAT person. Kane. We have a hostage situation at the Home National Bank. Oh, you know how this goes, Kane. It's a SWAT operation. All right, Kane. We'll try to keep this guy wrapped up until you show up. Yeah, you got it. Two hours. All right, thanks. He sounds like he is one petty insult away from a full-blown crying fit. Meanwhile, Barbie was told to watch the Silver Surfer, only they forgot to give her any lines. So we just kind of stand there in total silence. to the Yakuza Fight Club Bar. What? That's all? Oh, that bro is about to go full Super Saiyan. I think there was a sale on hair gel at Hot Topic, and he was like, I will take all of it. 
Yeah, my CI told me that the Tong and the Yakuza might be forming an alliance. I want you and Sarah to go down there and make your presence felt. So why don't you all head out and do that? Meanwhile, Leroy is making damn sure he will not get away with his crime at the bank. You know what this is? Your, your house. My house. Come over to my house for a beer. I will tell my friends. I live here. Right there, you see, 325 Cherry Street. I'm there from 8.30 a.m. to 7 p.m. most days. Good luck catching me. Cut back to the Yakuza. Seagal enters the writer's room and he sneaks in a few pages of his own work. Kane's father was U.S. military in Japan during the war. Kane's grandfather was one of the last great swordsmen. He eventually taught him the secrets of his buha. He married an affluent Japanese woman, daughter of a famous samurai family. He's raised and born in Japan. He speaks the language better than you do. Yeah, did you guys know Seagal is more Japanese than this guy? I mean, if I was a betting man, I would have lost a lot of money. The last thing we need is some half-breed samurai breathing down our neck. Yeah, we know he's a samurai. Our cops show up and they're like, oh, we talk about Seagal? <laughs> I love that guy. Careful, big boy. We bite back. <laughs> oh, did starting a brawl in a Yakuza bar not work out like you thought? They get these two guys, but Goku gets away. Goku wasn't running away, though. He was gathering the Dragon Ball so he could wish his boss out of jail. And it worked, thank you. Oh, what do you mean you can't hold them? They assaulted a police officer. The cop who loses all of his acting jobs to Brad Pitt gets furious. He tries anything to keep them in jail. Hey, listen, what if I told you that they were terrorists, huh? No terrorists. Then you can hold them as long as you want. What is the problem with people? We bend the rules all the time. It doesn't work. They are out, and they are mad at Goku. Who the hell were you in the club? What the cops can do? I have warrants. Bro, I am a criminal. I I have warrants and shit. I, I thought you would have had some of those too, but I don't know. I guess I'm more thug than you are. So these guys get in a staring contest while dudes wrestle behind them. We do what we want. We're Yakuza. We do what we want. Ah, you blinked. Also, a hundred bucks says Seagal choreographed this cuddle puddle in the cage back here. Back at the bank, it is clear Leroy has never done anything like this before. They say I gotta let some of you go as a goodwill gesture. Okay, folks, you can go on out. Because the cops ask him to let some hostages go, and he is like, Aw, shoot. Do, do I have to? Well, I guess you guys are the cops. I wouldn't want to get in trouble or anything. We learn more about Leroy. Uh, we also learn about Seagal's dead wife, who was invented just for this episode, and I am sure will never be brought up again in the entire running of the show. She died six months ago. <sighs> This lady was so embarrassed about being in a scene with Seagal, his face got blurred, even in his own imagination. I don't really want you close to the bank. I want you close to the SWAT command center. So, if you guys hear any kind of a kill order like that or a shoot order. So, we go to the bank. Sergeant needs a hug. Just watch that episode of The Last of Us with Nick Offerman, and he is on the verge of bawling his damn eyes out. No, I don't trust him, Kane. This guy is hair trigger. He's released five hostages, but he's still got the bank manager. Good luck to you, Kane, because if you can't do it, I'm going to go in and do it my way. See you, buddy. How you feeling? Better. I know, buddy. I know. It made me cry, too, okay? Seagal is apparently a hostage negotiator. Let's just go ahead and add that to his list of skills. No one else cares. Why should you? I care, and that's why I came. I care because my money's in the bank. I'm actually on my way to the club. I need some cash. So this guy puts his gun down. Then he's like, whoa, huh, surprise gun. And that was impressive. He is at the end of his rope, though. So he is going to take himself out until Seagal says, you will never see your wife and son again, which somehow works. So <laughs> suicide prevented. Great job, Seagal. I guess that makes up for that dude earlier. You shot a bunch for no reason. Cut back to Seagal's handwritten script, and let's just see if you can spot the lines that Steven wrote. 
It's got to be hard. They're real subtle. Gush. But right now, the risk is too great for us. There's more bad news on the Kane front. He's been deployed all over the world as a highly skilled assassin. After he left Japan, he was recruited into black ops for the U.S. government. That's a fight we will not win. He spends so much time brown-nosing Seagal, I'm sure there's mutual respect both ways. So they're not real Yakuza? No, they are American Japanese. These guys are kind of wannabe Yakuza, so they've got their uh, egos on the line. Or not. You know, <laughs> or not. Yap boys is Yap League's is top ramen noodle. And then, even though he spent half this episode talking about how great and powerful Seagal is, the moment he sees our man, he's like, I think I could take him. <laughs> and how many camera angles do we need to make this old man fight seem energetic? At least seven. So Seagal chases off after Captain Hair Gel, and he's like, Oh shit, it's Goku! And he loves watching DBZ, and he wants to help our man go Super Saiyan 3. Okay. Yeah, as it, as it turns out, he was not a Super Saiyan. I guess he was just some guy who really really likes hair products. I'm sorry, that's my mistake. The episode ends with them all going to jail. Goku dies, which happens so often in Dragon Ball, people don't even get sad about it anymore. And the episode ends with this dude smoking a butt. So, let's head on over to Red Eye Reacts. Who are I'm very curious. Seagal's hairline has officially hit a full 90 degree angle. His style has, dare I say, peaked. Well, I mean, what does that have to do with me? That name doesn't ring a bell. Well, I mean, shh, I could talk to him. I mean, I could talk to him. We are in their face in every other orifice they got. Uh, let the Yakuza know that we're thinking about them, that we love them, that we miss them. So why don't you all head out and do that? Kane's father was U.S. military. He married an affluent Japanese woman. Ah, he married a flatulent lady, I see. Most of them are. Don't got a job. Don't got a family. Don't got nowhere to live. Poor old Leroy. For my name is it Leroy. Social security number 1842315678. Well, you know, because life is not black and white. They know who it's going to. They know a part of the world. And I'm sure they can figure out the rest. They know what part of the world. I'm sure they can figure out the rest. <laughs> that, that should be UPS's new slogan. UPS, you tell us what part of the world you wanted to go to. And uh, I'm sure we can figure out the rest. Finito, we did it. Thank you so much. If you liked it, please subscribe. Just just please subscribe. Just hit the button. Sorry, he comes out sometimes. Like the video, leave some comments. A huge shout out to my patrons. You all are great. We have some cool stuff coming up for you all. A couple of votes going on. I'm very excited. If you want the power to make me go crazy like they do, link down below. I'd appreciate the support. It helps me out, helps the channel out. It's just kind of fun. If you want to join the Discord channel, link down below. Merch store down below. I will see you all next time. And until then, stay happy and stay healthy. Who ordered the egg?